Coexistence. China always prepared to live peacefully. Well, let's make a start in the classroom, shall we? In future, no more ideological arguments. Now, are you willing to make a truce, Taro? Yes, sir. Mm. I apologize. Ah. Good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's happening? Well, Taro and Su Li have decided to live together in harmony. Is that like living in sin? <laughs> no, Danielle. We are making trousseau. A trousseau? You're getting married. When is a happy day? Not trousseau. Trousseau. <laughs> yeah, well, what Taro means is that uh, he and Su Li have decided to have no more political arguments. Ah, oh, d'accord. In harmony, yes. Tell me, Daniel, did you do anything exciting over the weekend? No. Did you? No. What a pity. You were alone, not being excited. I was alone, not being excited. Together, we could have both been very excited. <laughs> yes, I'm sure we could. Now, um... Good evening, Mr. Brown. Oh, Ali. What have you been doing with yourself over the weekend? Oh, blimey. Saturday, <laughs> I'm going to the Palace of Buckingham to see Her Majesty the Queen. But she was not in. <laughs> then I'm going to Browning Street to see the Prime Minister, Mr. Colorgas. <laughs> Yes, please. He was also not in. Then I'm going to see the Nelson's tomb. Well, I hope he was in. Oh, no. I did not see him either. Oh, go on. <laughs> Buenas noches. Ah, Juan. Si, sí, senor. Yeah, I've got a bone to pick with you. Chicken bone. <laughs> no, a bone of contention. Ah, I never had that before. <laughs> Last week, I asked you to write out a verb is a word that denotes an action or state 20 times. Ah, right it, hombre, look. Here it is. A verb is a word that denotes an action or state 20 times. Yes, 20 times, right. I sometimes wonder if you're quite as stupid as you look. Por favor. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Good night. Good night. No, Zoltan, good evening. Good evening. She teach me plenty much. Oh. <laughs> Did you have a nice weekend, Anna? Yeah, I enjoyed myself with the fairies. <laughs> fairies? What, at the bottom of your garden? Nine, on the River Thames. Oh, fairies. Yeah, fairies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good evening. Good evening, Master G. Been shopping, have you? We are being on the funny fair. And I'm winning these gifts on the shooting rifles for only 20p. Well, you must have been hitting the bullseye. Oh, no. I hit the owner man. <laughs> and he's giving us these prizes to go away. And we are we have ice cream and doughnuts and lemonade and hot dogs. Then we went up and down on the moon rocket. It's a wonder you both weren't violently sick. We were twice each. <laughs> Right, while I'm marking the register for Miss Courtney, would you all turn to page 27, please? Yes, sentence construction again. Enter. I brought your tea. Thank you. Are you all right? Would you like two tickets for the ladies' circle supper dance? Oh, I wouldn't mind. I like dancing. Five pounds each. <laughs> Oh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, as a committee member, I'm supposed to sell six tickets. Oh, well, I'm sure you'll get rid of them. Not at that price. It's far too expensive for a supper dance. Well, I suppose they put on a good spread. Oh, yes. Last year, I managed to get two sausage rolls. Oh. Who else did 
do you know, fool enough to buy sausage rolls at £2.50 a time? Oh. oh, Mr Brown, come in. We were just talking about you. <laughs> That'll be all. Thank you, Gladys. Yes, all right, Miss Courtney. Good luck. What did she mean, good luck? <laughs> Nothing at all. Now, Mr Brown, oh, do sit down. Oh, I've just bought the register, actually. Well, thank you very much, but there's no need to rush away. Sit down. Yeah, but my students will I'm be sure waiting. I'm sure they won't miss you for a few moments. Would you care to join me in a cup of tea? Yes, thank you. <laughs> now, Gladys and I were just talking about you. Yeah. We were saying uh, how lonely your life must be. After all, you live alone. There's nothing to do in the evening. I mean, for example, what are you doing tomorrow night after class? Well, nothing in particular. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Would you care to go to a dance? Oh, yeah. With you. I'm afraid <laughs> not, Mr. Brown. But don't be disappointed. I shall be there. Ah. But I already have my own escort. <laughs> no, the um, Lady Circle are holding their annual supper dance. I happen to have two spare tickets. And, of course, I immediately thought of you. You do dance. Well, a little, but I know Jean Kelly. <laughs> well, that's splendid. There we are, then. That's settled. <laughs> oh, thank you. That's very good of you to consider me. Oh, not at all, dear boy. You can give me the money later. Yes, all right. Money? <laughs> For the tickets. Five pounds each. Five... You didn't say tomorrow night, did you? Yes. Oh, dear. What a pity. <laughs> what is, Mr Brown? Well, I have to go to the laundrette. I'm bound to my uh, last clean shirt. How unfortunate. Yes, any other night but tomorrow would have been fine. Well, of course, if you do have to go to the laundrette... Oh, yes, I do, I do. Oh, well, then we had uh, better forget about it. Yes. After all, I'm not the sort of person to uh, put pressure on anyone. Oh, no, I'm sure you're not. No point in forcing anyone to do anything they don't want to do. Oh, very true. <laughs> oh, by the way, I shall be having lunch next week with the area education officer. I expect he'll want to know how you're getting on. Really? <laughs> the right word in his ear could lead to a full-time job. Oh, well, that would be marvellous. Yes. Pity about the ticket. <laughs> Ten pounds, you said. You've changed your mind. <laughs> How nice. Sorry. Right, now pay attention. Tonight, we are going to play a little game. Pontoons? <laughs> no, not a card game, Max. Yeah, I know a good game. Postman's Knockers. <laughs> no, we're not playing those sort of games either, Giovanni. No, this is a verbal exercise to help you to improve your English and test your imagination. Blimey, Ranjit is not having a chance. Giovanni, <laughs> play us! <laughs> What we're going to do is to try to tell a continuing story. That is to say, we could, for example, start with, once upon a time, there was a man called Arthur, and he was a bus driver. And then the next person would add something more about Arthur and the things he did, and so on. You'll soon pick it up once we get started. We'll start with you, one. I don't know this man, Arthur. <laughs> Arthur is fictitious. <laughs> but you say he's a bus driver. <laughs> It's make-believe. I made him up. Ah, imaginario. Yeah. I want you to make up a story using your imagination. I understand. Uh, once upon a time, there was a man called Nickel Ass. That's not quite right. No? No. Once upon a time, there was a woman called Nickel Ass. <laughs> It's pronounced Nicholas. It's all right. Once upon a time, there was a man called Nicholas. He was a postman. Postman. No, no, no. Postman. One, a man who delivers letters is called a postman. A man who sticks poster, postman. <laughs> Sticker. No, no, his name, Nicola. Right, your turn, Ingrid. Tell us more about this uh, Nicholas who is sticking up 
posters. <laughs> One man heats up his ladder when he sees a widow. What is a widow doing up his ladder? <laughs> well, the widow is in the opposite house. There are four widows, two upstairs widows, one downstairs widow, and a French widow. You mean windows? Oh, sorry. The man is house robbing. Good, good, good. Right, your turn, Zoltan. Please? Yes. Continue the story. Bochana? We are making up a story. Understand story? Story? Yeah. Uh, I know a very good story about Aladdin and his wonderful limp. <laughs> this is another story about Nicholas. Ah, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Santa Nicholas comes every year. Ah, uh -huh, yes, this is another Nicholas, not Saint Nicholas, and he is on a ladder. Ladder, yes. Yes, when he sees through a window a burglar, a robber. Now, use your imagination and tell us about what happens next. He sends for ambulance. <laughs> Why would he send for an ambulance? He falls off ladder. <laughs> Good imagination, no? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Right, uh, let's see what you can do with the story, Anna. The burglar hears the ambulance but thinks it is a police. So he climbs back out of the window, up the fire escape, onto the roofs. Very good. Max, carry on. There is no way out. He can't go up. He can't go down. Now, the only way he can go is across. It's a big across. So he gets ready. He runs, he jumps, and he misses. That well, is going to be a very short story. Ah, oh, no, now it's my turn. He does not kill himself because he jumps onto a big lorry full of, how you say, the cut grass. Hey? The cut grass. <laughs> hey! You're not hearing very well. You are not understanding very well. Cut grass is called hay. Oh! No ho, hay. <laughs> He's saving his life. Good. Well done, Daniel. Right, Giovanni, your turn. Now the coppers are coming. <laughs> the burglar panics. Then he sees it at church, so he goes and knockers on the door. <laughs> A priest, he hears this knockering, so he come along and open the door. The burglar, he say, Father, I'm in a big trouble. So the priest say, Come into the church, my son. And I give you sanctuary. Okay, says a burglar, and sanctuary much. Stunning <laughs> uh, genius, right? Carry on, Ranjit. Meanwhile, the man who is falling off his ladders is telling the police that he's not a poster sticker upper man, <laughs> but a secret agent. And the burglar man is being a Russian spy. Well, I must say, you've all got very vivid imaginations. <laughs> Taro? Asso. <laughs> Russian spy. No call pistol on Hedo. And do change your clothes or to escape. <laughs> the plot thickens, right, Jim Miller? But. The priest is be recovered and crawl to be ring judgment. <laughs> Russian spy, he see him and toy shoot at him. <laughs> As priestess fall, he is pulled bell of rope. <laughs> Ding <laughs> dong. Very good, Ali. <clears throat> yes, please. <clears throat> the agent is thinking. Hello, hello, that is very strange hearing bells when it is not church going time. So he's going into the church and finding the Russian spy up the belfry. <laughs> Come down with your hands stuck up. You are cut, you dirty Russian rat. Very good. Well, Suley, I don't suppose there's really much you can add to all that, is there? Oh, yes, I can. Very devious Russian agent, master of karate, overpowers British agent. Hi, hi, hi! <laughs> Lands outside where helicopter waiting to take him to safety, fries off the Renning Glad. 
very good. Well, it's not exactly Alistair MacLean, but well done, everybody. Excuse me, Mr. Bride, but oh. about the dance tomorrow oh, night. Yes. It's black tie. Oh, dear. What a pity. Yes, Mr. Brown? <laughs> oh, hi, Ron. Good. You are dancing going? Yes. With Miss Courtney? No, no. She sold me the tickets. You have more than one ticket. Two. Then you must someone else take? Yes, well, that would seem to be a fairly logical assumption. I very much like dancing. <laughs> a medal I have for dancing. I would love to be with you on the floor. <laughs> I am no can dance, but I am very happy for you to be teach me, Master G. Well, what about you, Suli? Aren't you eligible for the other ticket, too? Not me. Western dancing, decadent art form, not worthy of consideration by Chinese Republic. <laughs> Uh, well, that narrows it down to Danielle, Anna, and Ingrid. Squeeze, please. Why are you not taking me? <laughs> I can't dance with you, Ali. Oh, no. I'm thinking we could be picking up a couple of nice pieces of a skirt. One for each of us. Well, I hardly think so. Not at the ladies' circle. It says on the tickets, old time. Now, does that narrow it down any further? Oh, but not for me, because I love to dance in the old-fashioned way. <laughs> A medal I win for my black bottom. Oh, blimey. <laughs> How can she be having a black bottom when she's white? <laughs> it's a dance, Sally. <laughs> Jelly good. <laughs> Well, how about you, Anna? Are you any good at old time? Germans are good at everything, but especially military two-step. <laughs> oh, please, me take to dance. He much prefer to take me. Don't you, Monsieur Brown? Mr. Brown must decide for himself. There is nothing to decide, well, Anna. Actually, I think you should decide amongst yourselves, otherwise it might look as if I'm guilty of favouritism. Now, it's almost tea time, so I suggest you go up to... Uh, the canteen and decide amongst yourselves which one of you girls is coming to the dance with me tomorrow. All right? Yeah? Here, aren't you going up for coffee? No, thank you, Gladys. Oh. Oh, just a minute, Gladys. Yeah? How's your dashing white sergeant? Oh, if you mean my old man, he's shocking. No, no, no. no. Old time dancing. Oh, so she conned you into buying the tickets then? A well, blackmail would be more the right word. Look, are you any good at old time? I should say so. I was noted for my Valita. Really? Yeah. Oh, well, in that case, you're just the woman I need. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I'm afraid my pas glissade isn't quite what it should be. <laughs> well, I might not know the technical words, yeah, but I can show you the steps. Come on, quick. No. Yes. You want to get it right for tomorrow night, don't you? Um, yes. Right. Please, well, please. look, you hold my hand right. and I'll la la it. Right, are you ready? Yes. Go to the left, like la 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 back, la 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 to this way, la 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 back, la 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 lovely, la 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 la. Sorry, Sorry, Miss Courtney, we were practicing the Valita. Well, I think I'll sit this one out if you don't mind. Oh. <laughs> and I'll have another cup of tea if you don't mind, Gladys. Uh, certainly, Miss Courtney. Well, Mr. Brown, who are you taking to the dance tomorrow night? Uh, well, I haven't exactly decided yet. I don't believe it. It's true. Mr. Brown's taking me to the dance. He's just asked me. La 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 la. <laughs> Right, come along, everyone. Places, please. Well, let's ask Mr. Brown. I do not understand you, Mr. Brown. Me neither is well. Perhaps he has a mother complex. Mm. What are you all talking about? Your choice of partners for the dance. Well, I haven't chosen a partner for the dance. For the dance. I thought you were deciding it amongst yourselves. We did. Anna de Vinne was. Ah. Until Gladys told us you have asked her. Mm. Gladys? I haven't asked Gladys. That is what she's telling everybody. Oh, that's ridiculous. Mm. There's obviously been some misunderstanding. I'm definitely taking you to the dance tomorrow night, Anna. All right? 
Don't worry, I'll sort it out with Gladys. I'll have a word with her now. Would you, uh... Ah, Gladys, just the person I want. Yes, Mr. Brown? Yeah, it's about the dance tomorrow night. Oh, I know what you're going to say. You do? Yes, but not to worry. You won't mind? Who won't mind? My old man Wally is not a bit jealous. Now, listen, Gladys, I've got something to say to you. Yes, and I've got something to say to you. Yeah, well, I'll come straight to the point. This is the most wonderful thing that's happened to me in 40 years. And I shall never forget tomorrow night as long as I live. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Um, uh, what were you saying? Nothing. It doesn't matter. Oh. So you're taking Dame Gladys, then? I don't know what I'm doing. I hadn't the heart to tell her. At the moment, I'm taking Gladys and Anna. Ah, Mr Brown. Have you decided yet who you're taking to the dance tomorrow night? Not exactly. Well, that's good, because Dr Wilson has just telephoned he's unable to come. Oh, sorry, I don't understand. Well, he was to have been my partner. Now you can have that honour, Mr. Brown. <laughs> Congratulations, son. You just got your hat trick. Lionel, Lillian Gish. Here, don't you be so cheeky. Very seductive. I borrowed from Danielle. Uh -huh. Good evening, Sydney. How do you do? <laughs> do get up. When Mr. Brown arrives, I wish to see him. I'll tell him. <laughs> You're done up like a dog's dinner. Yes. They're all here, the three of them. I've seen them, they've arrived. I wouldn't like to be in your shoes when they find out. Yes, well, with a bit of luck, they won't find out. All right, what's all this you made of? We all see. <laughs> Enter! Mr Brown, whatever have you done? Oh, it's nothing really, just a slight accident, a compound fracture. Oh, you can't possibly go to the dance like that. Oh, I couldn't let you down. No, 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 I insist, I insist. Oh, but I wouldn't consider it. Oh, well, if, if you feel like that, oh, fine. Oh, certainly I do. Oh, well, that's, that's very kind of you. Ha! She didn't fall for it, did she? Absolutely. Oh, 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 oh. Well, Mr Brown. <laughs> <laughs> fracture, I think you said. Yes, yes. Well, it seems more like a movable fracture to me. Pardon? Well, a moment ago, it was in the other leg. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> well, how do you like... What's the matter? Why are you dressed like that, Miss Smith? Mr Brown is taking me to the dance. Oh, no, he's not. He's taking me. <laughs> Mr Brown? Oh, look, um, calm down, everybody. I'm sure there's a perfectly simple solution which will keep everybody's honour satisfied. <laughs> Thank you. 